Hi, welcome to Raw Math. I want to do a quick video, hopefully it's quick, on how to calculate your multiplication factor. So if we have f of x equals c a to the x, I want to talk about that a. There's really three ways that we calculate it. The first way is you're given two values. There starts off 5,000 bacteria, and after seven days, there's 4,000 bacteria. You're given an initial value of and a final value of bacteria. And I'm using zero to stand for initial because it's at time of zero. And I'm using n to be my final because it's some time in the future. And what we do is we say initial times a equals final. So a is equal to final over initial. You could think of this as final over initial. That works too. The second way that you calculate A is there's a percent. The amount increases by some percent or decreases by some percent. Okay, if it increases, well, either way, we take the percent divided by 100 to get R, some rate in decimal form. If it increases, a is equal to 1 plus r. If it decreases, a is equal to 1 minus r. We do 1 because what's happening in our initial is we don't have two numbers, we just have a percent. So we have to think of this as 100% plus whatever rate is being increased or 100% minus that percent. We only use this one plus or minus if it is a percent, if it is a rate, if it is a percent increase or a percent decrease, if it is growth or decay. That's the only time we have this one. You don't use the one over here. You don't use the one in other cases. Okay, the third way that you will be given A is you'll be given A. You'll be told A increases by 0 0.75 every 10 days. A has a half-life of 30 years. A doubles every 15 minutes. A triples every hour. You're just given A. A increases by a factor of 1.4 every month. In these cases, you're just given A. Be excited. It's kind of like when you're doing an equation of a line and they just give you the slope. You don't have to do any work. It's just given to you. Okay, then the second part of all of this, you figured out the A, but you figured it out in some time factor that might not be your one unit. So our next cha challenge, now that we have A, is we need to alter it, alter A to one unit. Okay, so let's say that you are given three months down to one month. You have some big time and you need to go down to some small time. We'll call this B, we'll call this S, and basically if you're going from some big time to some small time, three months to one month, five months to one month, a week to a day. What we want to do is we want to say N is equal to B divided by S. If it's a week and a day, seven days, um, we want it to be one day, so that's one seventh. If we had 30 years down to one year, 30 over one, the number of times the small goes into the big is 30 times. And then A gets taken to the power of one over N. And we know it's a fraction because we're going from big to small, fraction of a time. Okay, if we're going from small time to big time. So 15 minutes to an hour, a day to a month, a month to a year. We have some small time, we have some big time. Well, think about a month to a year. A month goes into a year 12 times. So we did 12 divided by one, big divided by small. If we had a year in a three month chunk, three months goes into 12 months four times. Once again, 12 divided by four. So my number is still going to be big divided by small. That doesn't change. What changes is we need A to grow. 
we're multi well or shrink if it's decay. But we need A to be represented this many times. If we have one month to 12 months, A has to have 12 showings before we get to a year. So in this case, we just take A to the power of N, going to small fraction, because it's a fraction of the time. Getting big, it's an integer, or whatever N is, could be a decimal, because N will bring us up to the big time. That's pretty much it. Once you know these rules, you can find your multiplication factor. The last thing I'll say, though, is if you're asked for a three-month time and you're given a three-month time, make sure you have to do this before you do this because a lot of times they'll say, hey, write the formula. The half-life's 30 years. Write the formula for a 30-year chunk, and then you do, and then you don't have to do either of these altercations. So only alter it if they specifically ask for a one-unit time frame. Awesome. All right, thank you. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video.